All right. Yeah, it's Throne Tide's PTSD, pretty much. Um, the next boss, this is going to be the Guild Destroyer, Desolate Host. Think of Gorfiend 2.0, um, but much more complicated. Gorfiend was pretty simple compared to what Desolate Host uh, will be. So, let's take a look here. Let's close this one down. Desolate Host is going to be a giant pain in the ass uh, for a lot of guilds in terms of coordination, getting everything done. Uh, there's a big spirit realm, there's a physical realm, there's all of that stuff. Uh, a live realm and a shadow realm is what we're going to call them. Um, it is a spread encounter where you want to be spread at least eight yards out, similar to Gorfine, because Gorfine had a similar splash mechanic. Um, and we'll go through the different abilities here in a sec. Uh, Alright, so let's pull up this one. Alright, so to start off here... This is Desolate Host. It's a big green sort of engine. The Night Elf ghosts are being corrupted by this crap. Um, the first sort of big thing is bone cage armor in the physical um, in the physical realm. Uh, eventually, what's it called? The um, the enemies, sorry, the enemies will uh, will have a big shield on him, which you can't break until uh, somebody from the the earlier section can break them, or sort of from the spirit realm can break them. Um, his main abilities are, I mean, you have to have a tank tanking the engine of souls the entire time, otherwise it does raid-wide AoE, um, similar to, um, similar to Gorfine, I mean, similar to most bosses, if you don't have a tank or somebody in range, because it is a, a mobile boss, then you're going to have the raid wipe. Uh, Bone Shard is, is simple tank damage there, it's going to be going back and forth, um, with the tank stuff, it's just simple damage to the tank. Um, the other stuff is Collapsing Fissure. So here's a Collapsing Fissure in a nutshell. This is the, um, again, the Physical Realm. There you see a Collapsing Fissure. Okay, let's go back a second here. So you'll see a few seconds back. There. Uh, purple swirls in the ground are where these Corrupted Fissures are going to spawn. Again, don't spawn them in your melee, don't spawn them in your tanks. Um, the raid will have to be split half and half, but these purple circles are um, are where shit is going to be spawning. Don't spawn them in a bad spot. Simple, right? You're dropping off the void zones. Do you guys remember Gorfiend? Gorfiend had a very similar mechanic, right? You dropped off the, the stuff in a bad spot or a good spot. Um, here or something similar. Uh, there's actually these blue pools... These blue little cauldrons from around the room, you don't want to be picking, uh, sorry, you do want to be using them to switch between live realm and spirit realm or shadow realm or whatever. Um, but you want to be going back and forth, back and forth. The, yeah, here we go. The Spear of Anguish is another ability that we'll go through. Uh, let's see here. This one knocks you into the spirit realm. Let's pull it up for one second. All right. All right. Uh, so, Engine of Souls targets this warlock here with Spirit of Anguish. Watch what happens. So it circles you, it swirls you around, and it's going to force you into the other realm. It's coming, and now you're in the Spirit Realm. So you can see here, he can no longer attack the engine. Uh, actually, see, you can see the uh, the Soul Queen. The Soul Queen down below is what he's going to be attacking now. I believe it gives you a two minute debuff so you can't switch. Oh, never mind, they did, they did switch here. So it takes you out of the realm. Um, looks like he's being targeted again by it. Yeah. And thrown back into the spirit realm. Right, so it's going to force uh, transitions back and forth from spirit to live, live to spirit. Um, you'll have to know how the abilities interact with each other. One ability that interacts with the other ones is the, the bond. Do we have a video of the bond here? Uh, yeah, soul bind. So Soulbind is one of the big abilities. Um, it's actually going to bind somebody from the Live Realm and Spirit Realm. If you're in the Live Realm, you can't see other people in the Spirit Realm. You can see little ghosts of them, they're, they're very faded, and vice versa. As you can see here, the uh, Soulbind is going to go out. Yeah, hopefully this YouTube loads. There, you can see a little bond there between the players. They have to run to each other. In order to break that bond, 
and I mean there it's gone. Uh, but basically if you're targeted you will have a marker over your head or you go to a designated spot. We're going to say anybody with soul bind goes to a designated spot rather than like hey go find the other person with the, the marker over their head. Um, it's just easier if you have soul bind you're running to red marker and deal with it that way. You can see here he's going to get knocked back into the spirit realm. Um, there we go. And you can use little moonwell portals uh, to go back and forth, back and forth. So now, so Soul Queen is what you're attacking in the Spirit Realm. Um, the Engine is what you're attacking during the uh, the Live Realm or the, the Physical Realm, but they do share a health, health pool, so there is always something for you to attack. There's lots of adds here on this encounter as well, and this is sort of where it gets complicated. Uh, the, let me scroll up here. Uh, the adds themselves at 50%. The uh, the Templars, you know, they slam the, the ground, they're going to do some damage. At 50%, they get a big shield on them. Uh, what's another good uh, enemy that had a shield? I don't know, something you had to break in the past. Basically, you just, it takes like next to no damage uh, from, from anything, so they get a huge shield. You have to drop the debuff on them in the Spirit Realm in order to break their shield. You can see the shields there. This little armor there, the little swirls, means you're going to do no damage to them. There's a good physical indicator of, uh, of them there. So they'll take next to no damage if they have a big... There, you can see one being chased around here. That big shield means you're not taking any damage, or they're not taking any damage. Maidens and Karazhan. Yeah, I can't remember. Not Maidens and Karazhan. Yeah, the Bone Cage Armor reduces damage by 90%, so you're going to give or do next to no damage on them. Um, and in order to break that, those Bone Cages, you need to scream... Um, uh, what's it called? You get it... So basically... Let me try to explain this the best way. In the live realm, there's skeletons. At 50%, they get a shield. The only way to break that shield is if you're in the spirit realm and you get a debuff on you. If you get that debuff on you, you need to run to the same spot, right? The same spot where the uh, the skeletons are. You get a wailing scream that shatters their, uh, their armor. And that's how you'd be breaking their armor, in a nutshell. That's sort of the best way to put it. And that's where the confusion is going to be with a lot of players. That's the biggest difficulty on this fight. Right? So. Uh, so back and forth. Yeah, the Shattering Scream uh, that the priestesses are spawning in this section here. So in the, the Spirit Realm. So here again is the physical one. Knocked back into Spirit Realm. There's the Soul Queen. She's dealing her Wailing Souls, which is going to kill the players. Um, but basically, if you get a debuff, you run to the same spot as a bone armor. You can sort of see the ghosts of them. Um, yeah. Can't be interrupted. Exactly. It's going to, yeah, it's going to require a lot of communication. Uh, with pugs, I, I don't know. I mean, they're going to have to tone this down, I think, for normals and LFRs. Uh, but for heroic, I think it, it was totally, totally okay in terms of tuning. Uh, the other big ability here is the, I mean, Wailing Souls, which you guys sort of saw there. It's a one minute of raid-wide AoE. Again, similar to Gorfine. Gorfine did the same thing, you guys remember, right? Gorfine does this big raid-wide pulse, lots and lots of damage. Um, and then as you're collecting souls, you're also doing lots of damage. Uh, the other one is, I mean, there's interruptible tank damage. Make sure you interrupt Soul Queen constantly, uh, so you have melee assigned to her. Let's go back to Soul Queen really quick here. There's Soul Queen, that's her Wailing Souls. So that is, again, raid-wide damage, lots and lots of damage going out there. Um, the other ability here, where is it? Let me find it here. Armor. Where is her? There we go, Wither. Wither is the other ability. So here's, let me pull it up in Dungeon Journal and make it a little bit easier for you guys. So under Wither, causes a player's soul to wither and doing, you know, shadow damage every three seconds for one minute. That's a lot of friggin' damage over one minute, right? Like, that's a ton of damage. Um, it basically, it's going to force you to go to the other realm if you have withered on you. The effect is increased by damage taken by 100% by wailing souls. So, if you are in the shadow realm or spirit realm, while wailing souls is going on, so she does a lot of players in the spirit realm, damage in the spirit realm. If you have Wither and Wailing Souls, you take extra damage from uh, from these abilities, which means you cannot be there, right? You need to leave and go to the physical realm. Otherwise, you are going to get destroyed. That's it. That's how these two abilities interact. If you have Wither, leave, go to physical realm, right? And deal with, you know, the Engine of Souls, 
uh, the Templars, which are doing their slam and their bone cage armor here. 50% health, uh, they take 95% less damage for a minute, right? Being struck with Shattering Scream removes his effect. Well, how do we get Shattering Scream? Well, Shattering Scream happens from the Priestess here, which is going to cast it on a player, right? Uh, inflicting sensor damage every 1.5 seconds, so you can heal there. Each hit reduces the target's movement speed by 10% for 12 seconds. Effect stacks, spawn reaching 5 stacks, it explodes, and then removes bone cage armor from all targets. So, you know, if I run to a different spot here, so, you know, here is where I am. Um, that big rock over there is the, the enemy with bone cage armor who's not moving. Well, I need to run over here, stand here. Once I get five stacks, I explode, I destroy the rock, and then you can kill the adds up top. If you don't do that, well, then you're just going to be overwhelmed by too many adds up top. Uh, but yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, it can be interrupted, but should not be. So, Danis is right there. So, it says here, it can be interrupted. Um, you may want to interrupt the first couple casts. And the reason for that is because it gives you a slowing debuff, right? So if you're gonna, if you get one cast on you, okay, well then you're slow, slow, eventually you go too slow and then you, you're too slow to get there, right? Um, you may want to interrupt the first two casts of the Priestess, have the person run there, and let the next couple casts go through while your healers are focusing down that person. So, um, so there's that. And then Spirit Chains, uh, again, yeah, the perfect players from use Spirit to Focus. Uh, it is a magic effect, so dispellable. Um, lots of dispels, lots of dots. This will be a big, complicated fight for a lot of players. Um, and then in the last phase, we haven't seen the last phase, but I imagine it's going to be much like uh, what I put here for my notes. Uh, yeah, so I had a good drawing for you guys. Uh, here, I'm going to draw it again. Let me put up paint. So the way it's going to work is I'm going to put up here. I'm going to draw some circles. So basically this is the engine of souls, right? The engine. There, there's an E. Um, and what happens is between, oops, Sundering Doom and uh, here. So basically this is the, the hero burn phase, uh, taking more and more damage throughout the entire encounter. There's Doom Sundering and Sundering Doom. So here, it marks an area around Desolate Host, inflicting whatever, all players within 15 yards, uh, divided evenly. So if you're in the physical realm, you're gonna stack here, let's say, this is the physical realm side. You stack in a little circle to split the damage, right? Um, and everybody in the sh so everybody in the shadow realm takes 25 million damage. But the further you are away, the less damage you take. So shadow realm people will let's say you know stand somewhere over here. They take reduced damage. But at the same time, well, these guys get a debuff. These guys need to run away. The ones in the physical realm. So you want to go back and forth, back and forth, um, communicating as a raid team, well, we need to run away, stand over here, but this is the sort of big, big burn phase, last 30% of the encounter. Um, again, huge, huge burn. Yeah, it's a lot, last phase is just a big DPS burn check for the most part. Uh, but again, this is going to be a bitch of a boss in terms of coordination, communicating. Uh, a lot of players haven't seen this level of coordination since Gorefiend, and I don't think there's been anything... Um, similar to this this expansion thus far but again it'll be one of those big guild destroyer bosses guilds will get to one two three four you know there'll be five out of nine mythic like you know Gorefiend um, and they're gonna be stuck there for, for a while because players can't communicate but that'll be again one of the complicated ones so that is Desolate Host in a nutshell there you go uh, should we also not use Blessing of 